we capture stories that are in our lineage or in our community, we have a much better understanding of who we are. And I think that it's the only way we've survived as humans is like we tell stories. So. My name is Saul Guy. I'm the director of The Death of My Two Fathers. My you know, background is a mixed race. My parents are both Americans. Mom from upstate New York, She's born Jewish. Father from Kansas City, Missouri, black man. Well, I grew up in a small town in British Columbia, Canada called Grand Forks. Uh, very small community, not diverse in what we would say traditional ways now, but diverse in, in experience and in kind of the way that people wanted to care for each other. Also a safe place. I think for a lot of my brothers and sisters growing up in America. If you're safe, you can take risks, you can explore, you can think, you can ask questions, you can get outside of what is your known environment. And that's what um, I think has shaped, shaped me the most. This, this body I'm in, um, while I'm mixed, the world has only ever seen me or approached me as a black man. When you're born in this country as a black man, there's this thing that gets put on you. It's like, boom, it's just dropped. It's like a yoke. Like, it's just like this, it's almost like a, it contains you. And, and it's your, your safety is in danger. The gift of growing up in Canada in that small town was that didn't get put on me. And I, so I was able to navigate, I've been able to navigate the world very differently. I see some of my friends who are very successful and, and done all the things in this country and they still have that thing on them. And I don't think people really understand what that feels like. You know, if I'm honest, I went into making this film a bit selfishly. Um, I needed to go to some places that I was scared of, where my father was raised, Kansas City, Missouri, where he's from, reconnecting or connecting with the black side of my family. It was something I needed to do. The top of top dog is my sister, Travis Dean, the matriarch of the family. Holds it down. Conspiracy to distribute cocaine they actually got locked up together. They what got... do you say to people who kind of who pass judgment on it, you know what you guys got caught up in? Why were you out hustling or like you had a choice? I mean they right. Everybody has a choice. I could have been a doctor. I could have went to school and been a lawyer, but growing up in my environment ain't what I saw. So why do something I ain't saw? And you got to... I have a lot of like anxiety when I come here because I don't know why I build up expectation like I get. If I, I think it's guilt. I had never watched the tapes that my father left behind because I couldn't, I carried them around. Uh, he, you know, year of his death, he sat, looked in a old VHS camera, an old camcorder and recorded eight hours of, of video telling his life story. Being an only child in the um, neighborhood that I grew up in was a rarity. Um, just me and my mom were quite poor, and you know we didn't have a lot of money for a lot of things. But in those days, you didn't there wasn't a lot of things you needed. There wasn't a lot of things to be had. And I just wasn't ready to face that loss. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. The film gave me an opportunity to face that loss, but I needed to reshape the, my relationship with my father because I'm a, a father. We can repeat patterns or we can arrive to address them and we can um, push past them and then perhaps you don't pass them on. There's things I've inherited that I have the opportunity to not pass on. It was, it was really a process of um, a healing practice and you're making art to get outside of what you know and put something in front of you. And um, I was radically changed over the course of those, those, those four years, and I'm grateful. I hope that there's just a place where we can talk about the things that we feel as, as men and encourage people to find their way back, because eventually you will. It could be on your last breath. 
we as society could do a lot more to acknowledge that that's a difficult thing to do. The other thing I hope that for audiences is that we understand the power of the, of the importance of our story and telling our story and documenting our story and sharing, you know, and it does not have to be in this format. We got these, all these devices, go talk to your grandma and, or your grandfather or your sons and daughters or your aunt or uncle or the OG that, you know, helped you when you were 14, go sit down and like, Put the phone on and record audio. Get these stories so you can share them with others. It might just be to play it later. It might be because someone else will discover it. You're 13 now. You watch this when you're 14 or maybe 23 or 45, I don't know. And who knows what this footage will look like by the time you watch it. Like how this footage from 88, when I was your age, looks to me now. Yeah, for any filmmakers out there who thinking about doing a personal story, I would, I would just encourage you to take the first step. But take the first step and keep walking towards yourself and walk towards what you're most challenged or fearful of. Because there are things that you discover along the way that are transformative. <laughs>